Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the new Estabrook SD. Um, I would like to thank Kenro Industries for sending me this pen. I'm loaning it to me for review, so huge shout out to you guys, everyone who works there, and everyone who made this pen a reality. You know, thank you. So we'll go ahead and go over it. This is a bit of a special pen, and I, I do want to kind of get this out of the way. This is not um, a modern interpretation of an Estabrook pen. From the past this is a kind of new take on it but honestly i i think it's a pretty good one all right on to the size comparison so at the bottom we have the esterbrook sd right above that we have the cares custom decagraph this is the monsoon edition but they should all be the same size the lamy 2000 and for a bit of a cheaper pen pop metropolitan these two are right in the same price range as the sd this one's about 10 times cheaper or so um that way you can get kind of a good grasp of the size of all of these capped in different price ranges. With the pins uncapped, you can see it's actually very close in size to most of these pins here. Um, the cap just makes it seem a little bit larger than normal, but this is the standard size SD, not the oversize, and it falls right in line with a, with a lot of these pins um, when it's uncapped. Alright, let's go ahead and go over what I like about the pen. So first thing up is actually the design of it. Um, it's just a kind of standard cigar-shaped pen, but there are a lot of really cool touches. Um, there's no split section for the clip. It just kind of comes out. It looks very, very nice that way. It reminds me of a lot of the vintage pens that I do have. Um, the etching right here with the Estabrook logo is very, very nice. It's very deep, and it's filled with kind of a gold paint, almost, it looks like. And I'm going to be honest, this color is one of my least favorite. I, I really like the blue, even the black's compelling. This kind of tortoise shell looks probably the most vintage to me, but I, I think it's hideous. But the material itself is, is very, very pretty, actually. Um, you can see there's a lot of chatoyants in there. There's a lot of different colored flakes, and it is semi-transparent as well. You can kind of see the converter right around there. You can kind of see I have an orange ink in there, and you can kind of see the ink sloshing. Um, you'll notice little stuff like that. And another nice touch is if you look right underneath the Estabrook logo, this little gold band, when you screw it in, it kind of sits right under there and almost highlights it. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, so the, the material itself is, is nice. I don't love the appearance of it, but it's nice. And the design kind of continues through when you uncap the pen. The, the biggest difference I'm seeing here is the nib size versus a lot of vintage pens. Um, other than that, though, it it looks like it could be an older pen. It really, really does. Even the, the nib design itself is very, um, it's plain, but not in a bad way. It's, it's very, very nice. It just has kind of simple flourishes, and this is Estabrook 1858 on there. So it's, it's a very, very nice nib. It is steel nib, but it is gold plated. Um, these are not gold nibs. However, it is a number six size nib, so you can replace it with almost you know any other number six size nib that you'd like as far as I can tell a big thing about this pen though is the capping so you can tell there's very very few threads here actually for it to cap and that's because if you just sit here and put the cap on and start turning it, it's gonna do nothing it has a bit of a spring-loaded cap which you can kind of see in action there so you push down and then you twist it shut and it really only takes about one rotation to get a good lock in there now when you unscrew it, the cap will kind of push off just a little bit, but it's not enough to like throw the pen out of your hand or anything like that. It's a very, very nice mechanism. I like it a lot. Um, it reminds me somewhat of the Scondi's hook safe as far as like feel goes, but it's designed completely differently. I really, really like it. It's probably one of my favorite features of this pen because it's really fun to play with, but it's, it's a nice little touch that they threw that in there, and it does help the pen seal very well. I've left this you know, alone for a week or so without using it and the ink was not dried out. Still performed very, very well. Fit and finish on this pen are very, very good. So these are solid pieces of what I'm assuming is turned acrylic. Um, there are no seams, no gate blushes where an injection would have been used. It's, it's a very, very, very nice material and the fit everything aligns pretty well there are a few sharp corners like right there but for the most part it's it's very very nice how they finish this pen it's 
It's just, it's pleasant. It doesn't feel like, say, a four or $500 pen, but it certainly feels like you're getting your money's worth out of this pen as far as fit and finish go. It feels very pleasant in your hand. It doesn't feel cheap. It has a, a fairly high quality feel to it. And the material kind of helps with that. Again, that's, it's, it's kind of a uh, turned acrylic, but it's got a few different colors. It's got kind of this off-white yellowy color, and then it has a bit more of a normal white kind of flake in there with some brown, resulting in this tortoise shell finish. And the material itself feels very, very nice as well. It doesn't feel like a cheaper plastic. It, it feels very, very pleasant. Now, probably one of the things that I liked the most about this pen is the packaging. Um, if you go and watch my unboxing of the pen, you can kind of see that. But the packaging is just so, so excellent. The presentation is amazing. It feels vintage. Even the, the box it comes in feels vintage. And it's, it's, it's just an, it's an experience unboxing it. I think that pen, or this pen in particular, would make an excellent excellent gift for someone and half of that's going to be the packaging it's just it's crazy you know opening it for the first time the size of the pen is very very nice it's as you saw in the size comparison it's similar to other pens as far as size goes it's kind of in that medium it's not huge it's not super small um, i like the size quite a bit if you have very tiny hands you may not my wife is not a big fan of this but if you have, you know, enormous hands, um, it might not be super great for you. You can post it, but we'll get to that later. But the size overall, I think, is very, very nice. The section's really good. Um, it doesn't taper in the middle quite as much as I would like, but there is some taper on the end there. And it slots in my hand very, very nicely. I like it quite a bit as well. It's a good um, kind of girth for me, I guess. It's, it's a fairly wide section. So if you don't like that, maybe look somewhere else. But uh, I like it quite a bit. And the section on the um, MV adapter is nice as well. It tapers quite a bit more. Um, honestly, I like it a little bit more. But it's it's very pleasant as well. Very similar in size. Maybe just a tad bit smaller. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be using that one possibly more than this section here. And last but not least, the nib compatibility. So you saw the number six size nib that's on there. Um, now this is not included, this is an added $40, but you can get what is called an MV, Modern to Vintage Nib Adapter. And it's basically this here. You get this converter, which is standard international, but um, it fits this section just a little bit better than most would. Um, the section tapers just a little bit more. And what you can do is you can take those vintage Esterbrook nibs, like I have, um, this is one from my personal collection here. This is an Esterbrook, um, 1555 nib and you can insert them now I don't know if this is a permanent thing or not but mine actually came with a nib as well an Esther book um, 2556 I believe yeah 2556 nib um, so both of these work now there are some downsides to this I'll get into that later but for the most part all you really have to do to swap your pen over especially since they include you know another cartridge with the uh, with the new nib section is unscrew it it fits with the cap it fits everything it looks a little bit funny because of the size of the nib I think but honestly it's it's very very pleasant and again I prefer the section on this one just a little bit just because that that little bit more taper but once you've done that the pen fits perfectly normally that's that's all you really have to do is swap out that just the section and the nib there. All right, on to the neutral. So first up is going to be the clip. Now, performance-wise, performance wise, <laughs> this clip is perfect. Um, it's, it's a nice kind of plain, minimal design. I think it complements the pen very, very well. It has good ramp. It has good spring. It's a very, very nice clip. The only reason it's in the neutral is because if you look right here, you can see that it is actually... Um, kind of just a, a, th a thinner piece of metal with some kind of affixed to it. That thinner piece of metal comes down to a rather sharp point. It is not as sharp as the Lamy 2000, but it is sharp and can and will catch your finger if you're not careful. So just keep that in mind. Um, 
the clip performs very well. Just mind not to get your hand caught on it because it is rather sharp. Next thing up is going to be the posting. Um, this pen does post. It posts securely, but it just doesn't post that deeply. It only posts to about there, which is maybe an inch. Now, when posted, this pen is very, very large, at least in my opinion. Um, if you have you know enormous hands or hold your pen very, very far back, this might be perfect for you. Um, for me, though, I hold my pen very close to the nib, and it doesn't work that well for me. If it posted a little bit more deeply, I could totally see it happening, but I think because of that mechanism inside, that may cause some issues. Last thing on the neutral side is going to be the nib. Um, not necessarily the vintage nibs. They're going to write how they write, but the modern nib that comes with this. Um, it's, again, it's a very, very nice nib. The flow is pretty good. Um, you can see that this is a medium. They offer this a medium and fine. Now, the nib width is not correct. This this writes like a Western fine. Um, I'll show that in the, you know, the writing review. Um, the nib is the most boring part of this pen, and I think that's honestly the only reason it's here. It writes just fine. I've had no skipping issues with it whatsoever. Um, but to be honest, I really, really wish that they had bumped this pen up to $200 and put a gold nib on it. Um, this feels like a standard number six size steel nib. And it's not spectacular enough to be on this pen, I don't think. Granted, you know, a lot of people are probably going to buy this so that they can use that, that vintage nib. But this one still needs to perform very well. And it does perform very well but it's boring. I think they should have done something else with it um, or maybe offered it in more nib sizes something because offering it in medium fine and having kind of a bland nib is one of the larger downfalls of this pen to be honest and I just I, I really liked carrying this pen but when it came to using it I was kind of meh about it I don't know um, now, when using the vintage nibs, it's a lot more fun, but this nib here is it's just okay. So, now, with, with the extra $40, you know, you do get this, this modern to vintage nib adapter that adds a lot more character to this pen that I think it really, really deserves, but out of the box, it's just not super spectacular. On to the dislike. There is only one thing that I dislike about this pen, and that is the price. So, this pen is $156 for this exact configuration. Um, you can get the oversize for round two, and you can pick up the modern to vintage nib adapter for $40, which I would recommend. If you, if you have Estabrook nibs, get it. You know, it adds a lot more value to this pen, and it's it's a good pen, but I think the competition is very stiff. A lot of companies are coming in with debatably lesser materials, depending on who you ask, but with gold nibs at this price. Um, I, I really think they should have put a gold nib on this and charged this a little bit more. Again, I'd be much more comfortable paying, you know, 200 for this pen with a gold nib or you know at this price the 156 include the nib adapter it's it cannot be $40 it's it's a black acrylic section I understand the tooling is probably a, a good bit of it um, being able to buy the tools to just fit the vintage nibs in probably fairly expensive but I feel value-wise that this pen just isn't there. I think with this steel nib, they could charge 120 and probably be fine. I think 156 is a bit, bit excessive to not include this here, which is honestly the most compelling part of this pen. The design's really, really nice. Um, the fit and finish is great, but at this price, it's just another pen. At 120, it'd be a spectacular pen. Or at 156, 
with a you know vintage nib adapter included, that would also make it a spectacular pen. So I think they need to work on the price just a little bit to kind of get this where I think it could perform best. All right, on to the writing sample, and this is the um, just the normal Estherbrook SD nib that comes on it by default. All right, so this is the Estherbrook SD. And this is a medium nib. Although again, to me, it writes a bit more like a fine. Um, it kind of reminds me of Lamy's fine nibs, to be honest. So if you have like a Safari or something like that, you'll you'll kind of get a, a similar experience. The flow though is is pretty good. It's it's decently wet, and you can you can get some some decent you know shading out of it. Um, and I'll do a quick reverse writing line normal writing line and align with some pressure and so you can get a little bit of line variation out of this but again it's a steel nib so don't really expect too much just kind of keep it in mind that if needed you can get some um, I will also show you one of the vintage nibs I have here this is my Estherbrook 1555 nib here It's been sitting out for just a moment, so. Now, I just wrote vintage MIB, but also they won't have any quality control over these older nibs that you're, you're going to get from, you know, eBay or antique shops or whatever, so just keep that in mind. Um, but fitting it into the section using a converter doesn't seem to have impacted it at all for me. At least in most writing scenarios, it's skipping a little bit because it's dry here, but it writes well in everyday use. Um, that's a reverse writing line, normal writing line, and line with some pressure. This is not a flex nib. In fact, this is a very, very fine nib, but it does write pretty well. Um, they also included a another nib that I will show here. And it's going to be the Estherbrook 2556. Now, one gripe that I do have with this holder is that it is very difficult to get these nibs off. So to remove them, all you do is you just twist the nib unit and get it out. Um, getting it out isn't necessarily the hard part, at least for me, it's, it's getting it a new one back in. Um, both of these do fit though, I've tested both. And because I've put this one in before, it seems to be going in a little bit easier, but the first time with both of these nibs was rather difficult. And the pin looks a little less ridiculous with that particular nib on there. I'll go ahead and skip forward just a bit um, to where I can show you this nib actually writing. All right, and this is the nib that they included, the Estherbrook 2556 nib. It is a little bit wider than the um, other vintage nib that I have here. This is 2556. And one interesting thing about this is really the line variation that you can get out of this particular nib um, is fairly impressive, honestly. Um, I'll show you here. Got a reverse writing line. Uh, messed up a little bit there. Normal line and then the line with some pressure. So you can see there's a big difference between those two. So when you're coming up and you're doing, you know, you're writing, whatever you do, um, that offers some pretty good flex. And this is the one that came with the. Uh, MV nib adapter, at least for me. Um, I, I believe those will be randomized, but I'm not positive. But that nib's, you know, pretty good. I like it actually better than the um, vintage nib that I have on my personal Esther book. All right, on to the conclusion. So, yeah, just for a wrap up, this pen performs very, very well. It feels very, very nice. And I think the execution, the design, is outstanding. I'm extremely excited to see what comes out of the new Estherbrook company. Um, I, I've heard a few rumors that I'm not going to talk about here, just from just from the pen community, nothing from Ken Rowe. But I, I do think they're doing this name justice. Um, I know the older Estherbrook was more kind of, you know, value-oriented, things like that. But I, I think they could still make that happen and keep something like this in the lineup for people who would like it. 
I think this is a great way to use your, your vintage nibs, which is probably the largest appeal of this pen, at least it was to me. Um, and I think if they continue on the path they're going, that they could do some really, really amazing stuff with these pens. So again, thank you to Kenra for um, loaning me this for review. If you're interested in this pen, go check it out. Um, if you have any vintage Estabrook nibs, I highly recommend it. It's probably the most reliable way to get to use all your nibs. You know, the modern pens are a lot more reliable than vintage pens at this point that are 50, 60 years old. So if you have those, I, I highly recommend checking this out. It was a great way for me to check out my Estabrook nib that I already had on a non-functioning Estabrook J. But I think this is a nice, compelling pen. I just wish they dropped the price a little bit. All right, thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks again to Kenro for sending me this for review, and I hope you all have a good day. Bye, guys.